Hi and welcome back. This beautiful rose was painted by my friend who has a new channel here on YouTube, Morgana Rose Art. I've left a link below. Please pop over and um, say hi and tell her I sent you and um, subscribe to her channel. Maybe leave a like or two and a comment. She paints the most beautiful flowers and wildlife, um, birds, lots of owls and roses. So please do follow the link and I'd, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe. Let's try and get her subscriber level up a little bit as it's such a new channel. So inspired by Morgana's beautiful sunset rose, I'm going to be painting my own bouquet of roses and flowers using Opera Rose, um, Jackson's own brand colour. And I've never used this before, so I'm going to really enjoy playing around with such a beautiful, bold pink. So to start with, I've set up my board at 45 degrees and I'm using Milford 100% cotton cold pressed paper. I'm using these two bamboo flat sort of harky brushes. They're Chinese brushes I bought from AliExpress. I'm afraid I don't know the brand or the link, but if you go to AliExpress, you could probably see them there. I have loosely designed my painting with just the positions of where the main roses will be and a few other flowers and I have masked out lots of little white spots uh, for small flowers um, around the roses that I can preserve the white that way and then go back in later. So I wet my page and I'm now going in with a watery mixture of the opera rose I'm mostly going in and painting the areas where my main flowers and roses are going to be. I want my overall colours to be sort of pinks and lavenders and purples, obviously with some green for some foliage. So I'm going to get my pinks in first. Blending the colour out, strengthening up it up a little bit here and there lightening it here and there as well with a bit more water. I want this initial wash to be really soft and sort of very understated and then I shall go in with a bit more detail and slowly build the painting up. So that's a slightly richer, drier mix of Opera Rose being dabbed in with the corner of the brush there just to deepen up the concentration of hue in some places keeping it very pale in others. I've washed my brush and this is now sap green with maybe a little hint of perylene green but mostly sap green and plenty of water to do the same sort of thing as I've just done with the opera rose and that's to just introduce this sort of pale underpainting around the pinks so that I've got a nice base for my foliage and a nice sort of background, blurry background um, colour for my bouquet and my overall painting. It's a very hot day today here so I'm having to work quite quickly as my paper's drying a bit more quickly than usual. And I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to let it dry. And once it's completely dry, I'm going to wet inside the pencil outline of, of one of my rosebuds. My brush wasn't quite clean there, so I'm going to have to clean that up a bit. Should have checked that, never mind. No damage done, I don't think. And now I'm going to go in using my small calligraphy brush and a nice rich mixture of the opera rose into the wet rosebud so that the paint will run and diffuse. Because my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees, the paint will tend towards the bottom of whatever I paint through gravity. So I will end up with, um, it will become darker towards the base naturally, just from the fact of the board being at that angle and painting sort of into that wet area. I'm trying to keep it quite nice and loose and impressionistic. It's starting off the shapes 
uh, rather than completely painting them. I can build up a bit more, a few more layers as I go on. I just want to get the rough shape of that bud in. Now while it's um, nice and wet at the base, I'm going to put in the kind of little um, leafy bits that come out from the edge of the rose that close over the bud and then open out to allow the flower to come through and bloom. So I'm just going to put those in with some sap green and perylene green and start off with a bit of stem as well. The pink will run into the stem but I don't mind that because that will give me the look sort of a sort of a shadowy look. But putting stems in while the paint's still wet allows for um, everything to look as if there's a lot more continuity rather than it sort of looking sort of like a stop start kind of painting if you see what I mean or painting by numbers. There's more of a flow. I'm painting this one in in exactly the same way. I wet it first and then I'm going in with stronger colour, leaving some areas paler and then blending some out with a, with a clean damp brush and then putting in stronger paint uh, around the base, slowly building up the look of these sort of loose impressionistic roses and partially opened rosebuds. There's another rosebud uh, between this rose that I'm now painting and the other two, but because the others are wet and the green stems are wet, I'm going to leave that and paint that in later on when everything's dry. Um, because even though I, I like some of the paint running in together, I want to keep certain areas sort of a bit more hard edged and a bit more separate. So I'm just following my pencil lines, cleaning up certain edges because there is um, a few roses here in this little group. So I want to have a nice hard edge where um, this rose that I'm painting disappears behind the rose next to it. And that rose I shall paint a bit later. bringing in drier, richer, thicker paint, which is staying um, in the wet petals and just building up a lot more sort of um, shape and form and shadow. As I continue to paint the bouquet of roses, um, I'm going to put in a few stems and leaves here and there as I go, just to keep this kind of sort of continuity and to begin building up the bouquet. With loose flowers, um, I think they can be a lot trickier to paint than than they appear and um, they kind of look really beautiful and easy and sort of flowing and sort of misty soft edges and, and lovely deep shadows but it's actually quite a tricky effect to to get I think there's a fine balance between it looking too loose and maybe a bit abstract and untidy or too detailed and very, very sort of like uh, tight, I suppose, which is the opposite of loose painting. And as I'm still learning to paint flowers, then um, I'm trying still to sort of find this balance between, between the two. I love detailed flowers, I'm just not very good at them. Um, so I think that's why I'm trying to learn um, how to paint uh, loose, flowers so that I can give this kind of impression of flowers and that way it gets round me and my lack of ability of painting them perfectly. That's my excuse anyway and I'm sticking to it. So now my leaves have gone in um, using 
a synthetic Polina Bright um, mop, which is a really useful um, brush for creating those lovely leaf shapes. And now I'm running the corner of a plastic card. You could use your fingernail or the end of a paintbrush just to put in some veins in the leaves here and there. So now these roses are just about dry. I can put in this, this other one into the group um, in the middle um, without fear of everything all sort of running into each other and any kind of sort of definition between the flowers becoming a bit lost and confused. And now I've left it all to dry completely and I'm going to carry on and get a bit more colour in, um, sort of build up some of the background. Um, and this time I'm using a bit of indigo and I'm mixing indigo with the opera rose. I've wet the area at the bottom right um, so that I can paint it wet in wet. I've just wet it with clean water and now I'm mixing up this sort of nice pale sort of lilac colour, um, sort of purpley violet. And I'm going to just bring that in very loosely um, going over the masking fluid areas for my white flowers, um, working around the leaves and just coming up um, into the bouquet a little bit to start softening and blending in this colour and just deepening the shadows around the bouquet a little bit more. So I'll be adding paint with my um, small calligraphy brush and alternating between that and my small squirrel mop clean and damp or with extra water to thin out the paint that's on the page and blend it around um, the leaves and the flowers um, trying to create that kind of combination of soft smudgy sort of shadows and building up ready to put in a few more flowers um, at a slightly later stage of the painting. I can continue like this um, around most of the bouquet, just building up those shapes and shadows. And as I work around the flowers and the leaves, I'm adding either a little bit more indigo or a bit more of the opera rose or a bit more water to vary up the shades and the hues of the paint um, as I try to get this nice sort of like blurry shadowy background. I should do the same with some green a little bit later but to start with I want to build up these nice sort of um, mauvey shadow colours around the bouquet. I think they should help to make the roses really pop. So now I've been all the way around the bouquet of flowers and I have removed all the masking fluid so you can see the white areas of unpainted paper that have been revealed which I shall work into a bit later uh, but first I'm mixing up a richer um, stronger purple shadowy purple and I'm going to negatively paint around some of the areas that I drew flowers in um, around the outside edge of the bouquet uh, just to add a bit more shadow and definition and the impression of some slightly different flowers and again creating this sort of wet in wet environment and negatively painting is helping to give me the impression of flowers um, without me having to spend too much time and get too bogged down with detail.
So I'm going in quite dark and then uh, blending it out with more water on my squirrel mop in places to lighten it up and then charging in more of the darker paint to build up a nice shadowy outline around the edge of my negatively painted flower. And I shall continue to work around the group, putting in similar areas, um, balancing up the composition and the tones as I go, bringing in my darks. I don't want anything too dark in this bunch. I want to keep it quite, uh, quite fresh and bright. So I'm not gonna go really dark, but I do want enough shadows so that the tonal values all work together and balance out. I hope you can now see the shape of, of these flowers is beginning to appear, even though I haven't done anything to them. It's just I'm outlining and negatively painting around the paint that's already on the paper. I think one of the most important techniques that I'm practicing here is this kind of um, working into the dry painting with quite um, wet paint, negatively painting, building up the layers, but most importantly, softening back so that I've got my soft and my hard edges developing. trying to paint round this little group of flowers again here. So going in with the dark paint, dipping into water and softening out. You can see spreading the paint out really is what I'm doing when I say softening back. This process can take a little while, but it's well worth doing and because um, you can build up um, some really, really beautiful flower shapes. Now I'm going to keep this fairly loose and I'm not gonna put too much detail into my flowers, maybe just a bit of shadow into my roses here and there. But with a painting started off like this, you could work on it for quite a long time. Um, with transparent layers of watercolour paint, slowly but surely building up your flowers. Um, you could paint in um, beautiful veining on the petals and lovely floral centres with sort of um, with stamens and pollen and all that sort of stuff. Um, using this method, it's just it's important though to build the layers up slowly but surely, just a little at a time, softening back and blending. And what's really important here is using clean water and clean brushes so that you're not running the risk of, say, dirty paint water contaminating your bright pinks or that sort of thing. So it's really important, I think, to just change your water out every now and again when you're painting flowers, because it's lovely to have them looking really bright and fresh. So you can see here that I've swapped to the sap green and a bit of perylene green as well. And I'm doing exactly the same thing, but with the green and um, blending in the green to those sort of violet shades and the pink shades that are already there, um, just to add the impression of some sort of shadowy foliage beneath um, the details that we have on the top layer. And now this is um, going in and filling in my last few rosebuds using the Opera Rose and just putting it in really nice and boldly. Um, and this is to balance up the composition. Um, this rosebud here needs to go in 
and a few more rosebuds in various places in really rich but simple, simply painted areas of opera pink, of opera rose, I mean, um, just to bring the bunch together. And finally, using my Matthew Palmer, um, I think it's a tree and foliage brush or a stippling brush, I'm very lightly and carefully um, dotting the brush over the white mast areas um, with a range of pale pink, um, bright pink, and then purple uh, paint, just very lightly building up the look of tiny little flowers, maybe gypsophilium, I think it's called, that sort of thing. Um, but just tiny little flowers that are there between the roses. Or it could be anything. I mean, this really, this method of painting is quite impressionistic using the stippling. It's something and nothing, just kind of creating the impression because the important thing here is the roses. Um, the rest is just the supporting cast, really. You can see that I'm slowly building up the stippling and once the darker purple marks go in, it should look quite effective and they just add a little bit of shadow to, to those pretty little flower details. The idea with loose florals is very often for a lot of it is um, it's just marks on the page that the viewer's eye will interpret as um, sprays of flowers. So that's it, nearly finished. A few final details on my small calligraphy brush and a, a really dark mixture of the Opera Rose and Indigo and just a few little lines and shadows to indicate where the petals um, are layers of petals within the rose be easy to overdo this so I'm going to try not to. All I want is just to give the look of um, layers of petals there. Now back to my Polina Bright um, synthetic mop and sap green and a few more little leaves here and there just to finish it off, balance out the composition and then I'll put in a few stems to join the leaves up and that'll be it, the painting will be finished. And here it is, I've removed the tape so you can see it with its nice clean white border. And I think it works quite well. This is the first time that I've managed to paint roses fairly successfully, so I'm quite pleased. It's quite a, a steep learning curve with flowers, but it's so worthwhile to experiment and try to sort of see what you can do with them um, and I'm very very happy with this and I'm certainly confident that there's going to be you know more tutorials like this here so don't forget to go and have a look at Morgana Rose Art and her wonderful wildlife tutorials and go over there and subscribe to her channel for more amazing artwork from her and we shall be doing a collaboration at some point which I'm really looking forward to. Thank you so much for watching and um, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon if you want to be notified when I post which is usually at least twice a week. Thanks so much again and thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel and I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.